So you didn't know that uh, Medicine Man Galley was an all-service uh, organization. Not only do we potentially sell art, but we also have our podcasts. We art dealer. No, diaries. but I'm not surprised. It's amazing. <laughs> we have Jim Woodside here tonight. Today he goes by James. That's the official word of the well, when we sign it. I call you Jim. Yeah, Jim's fine. Yeah, yeah Jim's fine. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you're a great artist, and it's really a pleasure to have you on my show. Uh, you know, it's funny how we kind of met. Yeah. Well, thank you. It, it's very funny how we kind of met. <laughs> yeah, I saw your work on a in a magazine. Um, I don't remember the name of which magazine it was. It was like uh, an I think Amer American Artist. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you had done a series on Antarctica, if I remember correctly. I think. Yeah, or, it was actually um, uh, uh, after I I had been down there painting on a mm. grant from the National Science Foundation, and uh, this goes back. This was in two thousand three. And the uh, the article was done a couple of years after that, and I think that's where you saw it. Yeah. And uh, I got a call. I was amazed, even though it's just colors of white. It's more than colors of white. Oh no, no, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it 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 was a sublime experience. Yeah, and, tell uh, me about that. I mean, how do you? First of all, painting Antarctica has got to be brutal, right? I mean, how do you? Well, do that. I mean, I should say so, but it, it wasn't as brutal as you might think. Um, it was the austral. Would be for me. <laughs> it was the austral summer down there, uh -huh. so it was um, uh, February and uh, uh, January and February. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, the ironic part was, it was actually colder back in Boston, where my wife and family were. So really? they're they're shoveling snow. But yeah. at any rate, um, it's it's a desert, of course. Yeah, um, right. And and. Uh, and so it was very dry, and I think in the 30s and 40s, and you know, I had uh, numerous layers on. It was mm -hmm. really not that problematic, and uh, I mean, I was just so in awe of everything. This was a dream come true for me. And why is that? Um, well, I, I've always had this kind of uh, uh, historical uh, emphasis in mm -hmm. my, my work. I mean, I, I love history. I love these. The, the sort of romance of the past. And, mm -hmm. um, and at that and I had for a number of years had been really getting into the Antarctic and the Arctic explorers. And this is, this is just from a history st from standpoint, from a history yeah. standpoint, reading all about them and, and all the, the, the heart wrenching disasters and things. Mm -hmm. And I, I, there's a real drama to it that it really sucked me in. And I thought, boy, if I could paint in a place like that, it would just, it would be like, seeing the world like it was a million years ago, you right. know, and, uh, and so... And was it? Yes. Okay. I mean, I assume so, but yeah. uh, it, it was remarkable. It was... And so I got there, um, and I, I was fortunate enough to get this grant from the National Science Foundation, and, and I applied to go to Palmer Station, which is on the peninsula, mm -hmm. um, because in addition to all the, the dramatic landscapes, there's a lot of great wildlife there, and uh, it really? was... Really? Yeah. So, like penguins and... Uh, penguins, um, whales. leopard seals, uh, elephant seals, uh -huh. uh, just uh, birds that are as with the wingspan of this room. Yeah, I, just, albatrosses, I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, um, and petrels. And, yeah. Um, and so I was down there with, with scientists who were, who were so warm and welcoming and, and, and encouraging to what I was doing uh, mm -hmm. as an artist. And uh, it was... Um, it was a really, really, really amazing experience. Um, and actually, I was just thinking yesterday, uh, to segue a little bit, that, that, that I, I've painted a lot of landscapes and things in that interim, of course, mm -hmm. but I haven't, this is the closest I've had to that feeling, being out in the Sworn, uh, in the, um, in the uh, Sonoran Desert. Yeah, um, it's the closest to Antarctica? Yeah, in in terms of landforms, in terms of shapes, in uh -huh. terms of just bizarreness, you know, I, I yeah. Yeah, it, and, and do you look at the saguaros as like our uh, leopard seals? I mean, is that how you envision, I mean, it, because they're, I mean, they're giant beasts uh, they are. that are amazing. You know, they drew me to Tucson too. That's one of the reasons I'm here. But do you look at it in those kind of forms? I, I, I do. I mean, the first time I saw them, uh, with my first time out here, which was just a couple of years ago right. now, uh, I, I, I was just stunned. Uh, it, yeah, it's like, it is. They are. It, it's a it's a kind of bucket list kind of thing. You yeah. got to see these things yeah. to believe them. Yeah, forty foot high. It, yeah, these massive, strange Dr. Seuss like right. forms and. Um, uh, I, I don't know that that definitely did pull me in, and there was kind of the 
some of the mystery of Antarctica in it for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, and to some extent, I mean, when you look at the Sonoran Desert, it has that feeling, if you can get away from the homes on Catalinas, that it does have this feeling of what it was like, you know, 10,000 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does. It does. The earth in its in its kind of purest form. Yeah, and there's lots of ruins around here too. As I mean, yeah. the the Hohokam ruins are. Ever, I could walk you across a mile from here and show you ruins that are you know untouched from you know a thousand years ago that are just, really. Oh yeah. Well, see now I've got the next thing I've got. <laughs> um, yeah, every time I come here, this is my second trip out here to paint. Yes. Um, it. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. Oh, yeah. I'm just scratching the surface. And it, it does uh, really kind of get into your blood. That's what I have. So thought. now when you're in Antarctica, were you staying with American uh, regime or was it an international group of scientists from all over? No, it was the American base. Yeah. Um, it's That's a, the Palmer Group? Uh, the Palmer, Palmer Group, yeah. And yeah. it's a small base. I think there's just about 40 people there, yeah. including the scientists and support staff. Um, and um, And they had this... The National Science Foundation has this odd little program called, I think they still have it, called the Artists and Writers Program. Mm. And they'll let a couple of artists go down there each year mm -hmm. to do you know, various things. Normally they're like uh, uh, filmmakers and mm -hmm. like that. And there's been some pretty big famous art. I think Werner Herzog had mm. one of these same grants as well. And um, um, But there I was down there with painting oil paintings right out in the field. And I I, I may have been the only one that d did that. I, I'm not sure. It was kind of crazy. but uh, And you were there for two months? Uh, almost two months. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. Yeah, so you got intimate knowledge of the... Yeah, I could have stayed come, longer. I, yeah, you really loved it that oh, much. Oh, I totally loved it. Uh, and, and honestly, much like I do when I'm out here. Uh, I, honest to God. Yeah. yeah, it's the land. It's it the land. And there's the kind of, like I said, there's the kind of the 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 mystery of it, you know. And photos don't do it for me. Fo working no. from photos don't. Do yeah, it. no. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you bring all this up, you know, in the Sonoran Desert and Antarctica, because I saw those images and thought, wow, this is fantastic. And I wonder if that same sensibility is for me. If I would have the reverse, if I went to Antarctica, if I would feel the same kind of draw as I do the Sonoran Desert, my guess is I would. Oh, I'm sure that you would. And that's one of the reasons I probably was so intrigued by what you painted. I had the opportunity. I thought I was going to go to Antarctica when I was in the military. Uh -huh. I, I was a day away. I was supposed to go. And then something came up in the military and said, nope, can't go now. You got to got a clinic you have to man or something. Sorry, you're not going to Antarctica oh, after all. Well, you'll probably get there. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's about, you know, it sounds like I, it's a place that I should go. Yeah. Now, so let me just digress a little bit. Sure. So I, we, we kind of covered how I found you, which was by yeah. happenstance in a way, I, yeah. you know, and that's often how, quite frankly, you know, I, I get an artist in my stable is, is that there's something I see somewhere that is compelling and I go, oh my God. That guy can paint, and and you can. I, I live with your painting. I have paintings. I have them in my house, and I live with them every day. And, and I've never grown tired of them. Uh, in fact, I often muse when I see them. Wow, this guy's so so incredibly talented. And um, and so for artists that try to get into galleries, some of the best way to get into galleries is to get exposure other places and let the gallerists find you. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good way. Uh, it's hard to just knock on doors, and you mm -hmm. know, often they just won't open. Um, but when you, so how, when did you first start going, I think I'm in to be an artist? Were you a child? Um, yeah, I mean, I had always, as a kid, I had always done it. I had always, and got encouragement for it. And that- By you your know, parents or others? Uh, oh, my parents were supportive that they weren't artists, but, yeah. but no, just in school and yeah. things like that. And I, I always kind of- felt pretty good at it, yeah. you know, like, or okay at it, you know? Yeah. So, um, and then um, when I went to college, um, I continued. That was um, in Delaware, right? Uh, I started, yeah, undergraduate school at the University of Delaware. And um, and studying art there, there was uh, some young faculty. And, you know, art schools and, and art departments, they tend to go through these kind of golden eras. Mm. They go up and down. And at that time, this was, these were, uh, this was, mid late 70s 
um, young guys, real energetic department, and they really liked what I was doing and gave me a lot of encouragement and mm -hmm. kind of took me under wing. And I think that was one of the things that, that really spurred me forward. Yeah. And that was in Delaware? That was, yeah. And so what were your parents when you said, oh, I'm going to go into art? Was because so often you know it's yeah I see the laugh right there. It's like, you're like uh, how about law or medicine? Well, uh, uh, I would have been a Here horrible doctor, but yeah. uh, um, I I don't know. I I think that I I think that they were they were kind of mystified, but okay with it, and I think they had a sense that that it chose me rather than just me choosing it, uh -huh. um, and. It, to be honest, this was the in the mid '70s as well. There, there was less pressure about. First of all, the, the opportunities didn't seem. Th th there weren't jobs, uh -huh. and and it was like, okay, you know, go uh. if that's what you want to do, go do it. And the uh, I don't mean to sound kind of like, uh, uh, you know, casual about it, but but I think for young people at that time, there was a little more air, a little more space to kind of just check stuff out mm -hmm. than now. I mean, I teach young people now, and it it's intense, and the, the pressures on them are intense, you know, and the opportunities, the quote-unquote opportunities, whether that's through uh, social media or right. whatever, um, present all these choices, and and I think then in some ways that's just anxiety producing. Yeah. So I'm getting off topic. No, that's but. okay. No, that is the topic. I mean, I think part of this show, I want people to be able to understand what it's like to become a, an artist, yeah. the pressures and what's, you know, how do you, how do you get to this point? How do you do it? Yeah. Uh, and I find it interesting as well. Now, was your, what did your mom and dad do? What, what, was, what were their Oh, my, my dad uh, sold electrical equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, he worked for a, um, you know, they had grown up in North Carolina mm -hmm. and, and, uh, uh, you know, they moved up to um, to Baltimore, which is where I was raised most of the time. Mm -hmm. And then, so it, it was a it was a pretty ordinary, you know. Was did he have like one job that he stayed for forty years, kind of thing? Uh, yeah, one uh, one company. Yeah, for you know, yeah, and the they transfer him around, yeah. and, and he would sell equipment to you know like that. Yeah, yeah. and that's you know, so, and that's such a different concept for. When you come from uh, one, you know, get a job, son, you know, get a good company. Yeah. And uh, and you say, no, I'm going to do art. Yeah. And <laughs> and uh, but but he, he was, uh, you know, he, he passed away in 09 and he was a, a great. He, he was not an artist. and He didn't yeah. understand art, but but he understood people. Yeah. And he understood me. And it was like, yeah, this is what. Uh, Jimmy wants to do. Yeah, let him nice. do it. Yeah, yeah very yeah. good. So they were supportive. I think oh, it's sure. a lot easier when they are. Yeah. yeah. And so you get your degree in De at Delaware. That's yeah. your BFA. Yeah. And then you go for a master's, right? Well, actually, I finished up. Um, was a Whitney? Did you do a Whitney scholarship the, in between? The Whitney, uh, the independent study program, which is a, um, that was in nineteen. I finished my undergrad up there. And so what year was, was that that you finished? Uh, 1980. Yeah. So okay. it was, uh, and it was a great time to move to New York, and yeah. um, and you know, the city was falling apart. But yeah, it but, was. Yeah. But it was. I met a lot of good people, and um, I still have great friends from that time, and it was exciting, and I was a kid, and right. So it was a good way to move into New York. Um, and, and this was through a scholarship you got. Uh, Fellowship. It, it was a scholar. No, it's an independent study program yeah. that, and those credits will transfer back to whatever school you're going to. Right. And this was through the Whitney. Through the Whitney Museum. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, and they put you in this nice little building down there with twelve other kids and mm -hmm. and all and, artists, all artists, yeah. and they get a lot of big famous artists that come in and talk to you and look at your work. And it was a, yeah, like who who came through that you remember. Oh, that was a long time ago. But there would be people like uh, 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 Vito Acconci, Philip Glass. Yeah. Um, um, he came and talked to us. No, we're not always visual artists. Yeah. Whoever, uh, uh, Laurie Anderson came, and, and they'd come in your studio and sit and talk to you, and it was kind of amazing. You know? So you got a studio space to paint, yes. and that was in yeah. Manhattan, or was that? It was in Manhattan. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. upscale. Yeah, and, um, and it was an old, I mean, this is really gone back but it was an old police station which had been uh uh which the the whitney program took over mm -hmm. and it, they made uh 
12, it was there 12 or 15 of us, I can't remember, studios in it and nice studios and we'd be in there painting or doing whatever we were doing and uh, and the old jail cells were down in the basement. Mm. We'd go play in those. And, right, and you're like 22. So. Uh, 22, 23, something like that, yeah. Yeah, and so any of those kids that were a part of this program, do you still keep in touch and or do they did they go on to make a life in arts? Oh yeah, oh yeah, um, uh, actually, uh, a couple of them are still really good friends of mine, mm. um, and some have gone in different directions. But um, yeah, for sure. And some of them, are, and, and some are making it as a living as an artist. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know them all. I mean, a lot of them, I, I lost touch yeah, with. Yeah, sure, but, of course. Uh, yeah, you're definitely, 22. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, and so the, was you would say that was a formative, uh, almost transformational uh, time frame. In, at oh, the it definitely was, and then. Um, uh, so just moving chronologically, then yeah. I I, I uh, stayed in New York for a couple more years. Then I did go back to graduate school mm -hmm. to the Maryland Art Institute, mm -hmm. um, and that was that was really really good. I studied with a couple of people there that uh, had a big big influence on me. And yeah. that was just for art, uh, painting, right? The yeah, Maryland that was a, a, a MFA um, um, painting program. And when you before you went there. Before you made went to the MFA program, and you spent two years in New York. What were you doing in that time frame? Were you working as an artist? Uh, yeah, the whole yeah. Time? I, I was um, uh, uh, painting and working as a bike messenger, uh -huh. and then various other jobs that you could get. And then, right. uh, and then after graduate school in Baltimore, I moved back to New York again and uh -huh. stayed there for a number of years. And what pushed you from saying at that New York time to go to get your master? <clears throat> did you feel like this is the only way I'm going to get to the next level as an artist, or did you have other ideas like I want to also teach or I want to be in oh, education? Yeah, I guess the, the teaching part would have been part of it, but I wasn't thinking a lot about that. It was I, I had always thought I, I, I want to get a master's because it was a, it was a way to kind of... Uh, Take your take your your approach to making art to the next level, where you're seen as I, I don't know, I'm looking for words, but kind of more professional, mm -hmm. and you make some connections, and you can do it without the distraction of trying to hustle around an apartment and job and this and that. Right, you, you're there to paint. Right, and so it was really structure. Great. Yeah, and yeah. um, so that the the Maryland Institute was great for that, and I studied with um, um, uh, Grace Hartigan mm -hmm. and. And um, and Salvatore Scarpitta, who were two really really important people for me. Mm. Yeah. And why were they so important? Um, well, oh, the, that's usually supposed to be the other person that does that. Oh, you know, I should turn my phone off though. <laughs> oh, I thought that was your phone. No, it's not mine. <laughs> um, and why were they so important to you? Um, well, uh, Grace. Um, uh, Grace, who, who's kind of a, a you know famous second generation abstract expressionist, uh -huh. and her she she taught me a lot about about having your hand, your hand, your mark making connected to what you're looking at and to your brain. I mean, being honest to your hand, to your mark. Mm. That, that was that was kind of a lot of her her emphasis. She, and she could be pretty cantankerous and mm -hmm. tough to, to work with. I mean, for a woman who came up in the 50s and the 40s and became quite a, a big deal artist, she she had to be tough, and mm. she was. Yeah, I'm sure. And, um, um, but but that, that, that purity of your gesture and hand was, I, I, I always think about her. I still do when I'm painting, because she would talk about sometimes painting and and when you really, when you're, you get into this moment, all the other voices in your head kind of evaporate, and you have this direct relationship with what you're looking at, your canvas, and your hand. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not describing it as as eloquently as she did, but uh, but I still think about that. Mm. I did yesterday when I was out in the desert, and. Um, the other, the other person who I was really, really close to was Salvatore Scarpitta, sculptor, mm -hmm. who uh, um, he, he really, he was the one that really took me under wing and liked my work a lot. And, um, uh, and I was doing very different kind of painting at the time, but 
he uh, he was a larger than life character who who should be a famous artist. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he, he was amazing, and he um he taught me really to connect my work to life. I think mm. you know that you know painting in itself is there's nothing inherently interesting about painting. You know, it's only the connections that it makes mm. and the the links that it makes. And you mean when you say links and connections, not only you as an artist, but to you as also to the viewer, to the viewer, to the subject matter. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, he he taught me to move beyond kind of just the formal challenges of mixing Technical. mixing yeah. paint and this and that, but the 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 idea that that art speaks its own language. Mm speaks on its own, creates its own reality, those kinds of things um, that, that he was, you know, really helped me with. Yeah, I can yeah. tell it's still there. Yeah. Well, thank you. That yeah. means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, you know, I think for artists who are trying to find their voice, it's, a, you know, I, I see these individuals all the time. They come to the gallery and they ask my opinion because they want to get in the gallery. And obviously, clearly, they're not there yet. Yeah. Um, maybe they never will be. But... Uh, for those individuals that can find that voice and that connection that you talk about, um, I think it shows in their paintings too. Uh, I see it in your paintings. Thanks. Um, it has a unique voice. It's different. Um, it's not like anybody else's. Um, I can see the emotion. The emotion flows through. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to do that, at least I think, um, uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to get in a gallery that you know, and make inroads. And as a collector, which I am too, those are the things that ex- excite me. And, and, you know, I, I really love to see when I find those pieces that I can see it. Uh, and I really find it interesting about, because I've never heard this, but it makes total sense. You know, this connection of your body, hand, and mind to the subject and the canvas mm-hmm. as a unit, uh, but just free flowing. And I, you see this in other uh, in other areas too, a surgeon that is doing, um, you know, a major surgery has that same sensibility. Mm-hmm. He has the music, or she has the music playing off in the background, just to 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 make to set the scene, so you can engross yourself into the body and what you're doing. You know, great golfers talk about when they, you know, they get in the zone, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they just it just flows. And you know, maybe you could discuss that as an artist. When you go to paint, you know, painting, I, from most of the artists that I talk to, and I must say I'm not a painter, nor, nor uh, do I think I could be one, um, but most artists uh, paint every day or they try to, and mm-hmm. not all days they want to go paint. You don't mm-hmm. look for that light of creativity to strike you. How is it as an artist that you... What's your mechanism to go out? Because some days you might go, God, I'd just rather sit around and watch football. Well, that's true. I, I think that that I, I don't, I mean, there's a certain need to, to, to produce. There's a need to, uh, uh, maybe it's the, the egotism of, of wanting to make something, mm-hmm. wanting to, to be declarative, to make a mark, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't mean that in a grand sense, but... But I mean that in a, a kind of personal self worth sense, mm-hmm. you know. I could so, see that. so that's that's I think part of it. Um, also, uh, for me, um, I, I, to return to uh, the uh, a thing that I said earlier about the drama of it mm. and the the without sounding too sort of corny or romantic about it, um, coming to an environment like this like in the desert here Mm -hmm. or Antarctica or other places that I have wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. Um, In a way, it's kind of of to immerse yourself in the obsession of a place, in the dream of a place. Mm -hmm. Okay, And that can be a physical environment, but it could also be a a, a subject. All right. Um, Let let me try to, to bring that back. Uh, the, the reason I, I, I don't want to work, say, from photos of the desert is because there's a, there's a certain urgency to the outside, 
you know, there's a certain element of of time, of weather, mm -hmm. and all those things become smell. smell become part of the DNA of the painting. Mm. Okay, um, last night where I was painting out in the desert and it started to storm and thunder, mm -hmm. um, that that weather became the the primary drama. Uh, the primary voice on stage, mm -hmm. okay? And that wouldn't happen in a photo. Right. You know, that would just be the, a, a picture. Um, and that's for me. You know, it doesn't happen for everyone. Yeah. So, And that also affects your technique because yeah. you're like, oh, I better finish this because yeah. I'm going to get rained out. So yeah. you might be a little more uh, loose, a little more free with how you're going to paint. Well, there's a certain, lib uh, you know, it does liberate you yeah. because... Because you know, the, sometimes working you know in the studio, it's hard to know when is the thing done, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, having these outside parameters is kind of an interesting, mm -hmm. you know. Interesting, the light goes away. You're done. It light goes away. <laughs> time goes away. Right. Uh, there's too many bugs. I, yeah. I don't know. Whatever, you know. Yeah, it forces your hand. Yeah, it forces your hand, and um, so there's a kind of immersion for me uh, in this act of doing it. And when you go back to those paintings, let's say five years from now, you pull yeah. that drawing up or yeah. the, you all that stuff full, comes back, floods back in um, to some extent? To, yes, it does to a greater or lesser degree. Yeah. I mean, there's some that I look back on and go, wow, you know, I really didn't think that much of this one at the time, mm -hmm. but it really resonates for me now and vice versa. Sometimes I go, man, I thought this one was really Right, you know, and now it just kind of—it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you grow as a person too, I think. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you also learn, you know, that's humbling too because you learn how little control you have over this. Yeah. You know, like, geez, I thought I knew what I was doing there, and I thought I, <laughs> you know, and this turned out to be the main subject, and that turned out to be better, and right. I didn't think any of that at the time, you know. Yeah. And you can't be afraid to keep learning. No, 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 because you, you, the more you do this, the less you know. And uh, in, in a sense, every painting is a failure. Hmm. Why do you say that? Well, because if you're looking at nature, you go out there, what, I, I'm going to paint something as beautiful or as sublime as what I'm standing right. in front of. Right. You, you can't. Yeah. You're, but you can I get it. testify to it. Right. Yeah. Trying to get the gradations of the light blues to the dark blues. No, you can't get it. No, I... I, I I've tried with my camera, and yeah. I've finally come to the point and go, well, I'm not even going to try. So I you can't. look for something else, yeah. something um, tangible, something tangible, um, and something simple. Mm -hmm. And there's a quote I like to use with students a lot. I, 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 uh, I'll say, I think it was the sculptor Brancusi said that, um, he said that, Simplicity is complexity solved. Yeah, that's right. He did. And um, I love that yeah. because when I heard that when I was a kid, and I, I think of it all the time. And uh, that's so, right. So much of art is about shorthand and about, about finding those shortcuts in a, in a way that are essential. Mm -hmm. you know? Maynard Dixon, as he got better and older and wiser, kept going to more simplicity. He would wipe things out that he didn't need. Yeah. He took away from... He didn't care about the literal as much as the ephemeral. Yeah. And uh, he was very good about doing that. Uh, and I think artists that do that, Ed Mel's good about doing that. There's a lot of artists, I think, as they oh, his grow. His paintings are beautiful. Yeah, they, yeah. they start yeah. to uh, simplify uh, and bring it down to more the more basic bones of what you're trying to yeah. uh, have your viewer look at. Now, so you talked about your students. Now, let's get to how you got there. So you get your master's, right? Um, and now you're, you know, late twenties, early thirties, kind of time. No, it was, no, it was mid twenties by the time I got that, and then I, I moved back to New York yeah. with um, with uh, uh, my now wife, and um, um, we lived there for a number of years and moved around, and I kept painting and showing work when yeah. I could. And, and were and, you trying to break into the art scene? Oh, there? sure. This was the eighties, and. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it and was. Did you have any luck at that? Doing well, I had that? some different shows. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a famous artist or anything, but I don't know. You're but, a medicine man, Gallery, aren't you? But well, <laughs> and and I consider that That's to be joke. an honor. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I did have some some uh, some success, success. there. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my first daughter was born, and it's like okay, it's it's tough, and yeah. so. We left the city and bounced around a bit, and um, 
ended up where I am now teaching. And so how old were, were you when you did that, when you decided? 30. You were 30. Yeah. 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 So you had a and kid. At the time, that seemed old, yeah. which seems so ridiculous to me <laughs> now. But it uh, is. You felt the pressures of family and oh, yeah. responsibility for your daughter. Yeah. And, and like having a child with no health insurance and yeah. things like that. It's like, okay, i got to get this yeah. together. <laughs> and so you decided on um, teaching. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and so now I know you've been at the school teaching for yeah. 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. That, I think that alone is a testament to you as an artist and as, as a person who is really interested in the arts um, mm -hmm. because you probably have made more differences in that 30 years as a teacher than you, you probably could have even as just painting all that time and being in galleries. It just It's so critical, um, especially in today's environment where the arts are being completely cut out. Mm -hmm. But so tell me how, that, how was that when you first started as a teacher in this school? Well, um, when I first started, this is the a school is uh, it's called the uh, um, Walnut Hill School for the Arts mm. in uh, uh, just just it's in Natick, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Um, we get fabulous kids from around the world and around the country as mm. well. Uh, at that time, it was definitely more rough and ready, and and there was a kind of mash unit quality to let's just make this thing work. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a good time for me to transition into it. Mm -hmm. um, um, the 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 ki but it was new. It was definitely new for me. I had not done a lot of teaching mm -hmm. up to that time. And is it just the arts that they do at the school? Uh, well, that, no, it's a it's an academic program as well. Yeah, but, but focus with the arts. Yeah, but nice. the focus is on the arts yeah. and. Um, and um, you know uh, uh, that was, um, and so I, I went and and the art the visual art department at that time mm -hmm. was fairly small, and I was brought in to run it and we built it up and built it up and it's now one of the you know it's one of the strongest departments at the school it's yeah. really 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 kind of amazing but um, and how many teachers are in the art part. Um, in the visual art department, yes. mm -hmm. uh, there are see uh, about four full time and about eight part time. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, and these are high school. Yeah, students? yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so, what what did that teach you as uh, you know somebody who was an artist knew they were going to be in the arts? What did it teach you from the teaching component as a person? Oh, uh, that's a really good question because I, I think that, um, first of all, I learn from the kids all the time. I bet. I mean, all the time. I yeah. still do. I, 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 I think of them. I think of, of how one kid stumbles upon something. Uh, and if, if you're a teacher, I think good teaching is, is, is learning as well. And it's making art. I mean, yeah. it's learning to adapt. It's learning to improvise. Um, it, 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 if it was ever just me standing there imparting some great wisdom, right. it would be horrible. Right. And, <laughs> yes, and it would. incredibly boring for me after all that time. Yeah. So I've, I've never done it that way because I've never, the, the teachers that, were, that I remember as the greatest ones, mm -hmm. um, I never did it that way. So uh, it's humbling. Um, it's, it's hilarious. Uh, the kids are, are, are incredibly gifted. Mm -hmm. Um, they're kids. So they're, you know, they're, they, they, you get these kids that come in that are like, and in, in, just incredible what they can do. But then on any given day, they're 15 years old, 16 years old, and they'll, they'll drive you nuts. But, <laughs> but it, it's fun. It's fun. And it so is. you've seen an incredible change in 30 years oh, as yeah. an art teacher yeah. from just the methods that are available. I mean, you've gone from no internet, no cell phone, yeah. to now I'm sure there's a, the projects they're producing um, are completely different than they were 30 years ago. Now they're probably video, a lot of video content. Um, things that are associated with social media. How has that changed? And what do you, and, and and do you like what you see? Well, um, you know, it, it it has changed and it hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, I, I uh, we we've integrated in our program some of those uh, um, digital techniques and so forth. Um, we use them to kind of augment what we're doing, but I still very much 
want the kids in the studio getting their hands dirty and and having that that physical sensual relationship mm -hmm. to making art mm -hmm. um and that touch right that touch yeah. yeah it's really important and one one very matter of fact thing is the colleges we send the kids to art colleges they still want the kids doing that yes you know they want the kids who have been in the studio and gotten dirty and learned to do stuff like that so that's that's one part of it but the other thing is that that everybody assumes that because they're kids and they've been raised on, you know, with iPhones and stuff that, oh, they're just quick at it and that's what they want to do. I haven't really found that to be true. Mm. They still want, there's something in their in, in, innate in, mm. that, that they want to touch things. They want to make things. Mm -hmm. They want to, uh, uh, and it's, uh, so it, it, it has not gone away. For example, um, we have a, a, a wonderful darkroom um, uh, a component to our program, which my wife, runs mm. and we thought with the advent of digital photography you know uh, uh that that this would kind of fade away right it hasn't it's vinyl records so it, yeah. it's it they're back to it the kids love it they want to work in the dark room they want to they want to learn to bring an image up much like you would a drawing very slowly very mm -hmm. uh so um i i i have a lot of uh and i don't mean this in a in a kind of uh uh, I don't know, anachronistic way. We're not going to do the new techniques because I love them. Mm -hmm. But but there's still real value in some of these very simple hands-on things. Yeah, having them go through the process. Yes, yeah. So 30 years of teaching, you, there's probably some... I know, I thought it would be like two yeah. or three yeah. and I'd move somewhere else. But, <laughs> you know. Well, so in that period of time, there's probably been some of these kids that have gone through who've gone on to become well-known artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Is there any in particular that are uh, you know, heralded in their field? Um, um, there, are, there are a number of painters and sculptors that are doing quite well. I don't think you would know of them... Uh, I mean, these kids, I say kids, they're in their 40s right, now, right. Um, but they're they're just getting into that age where right. a lot they're of to make it. some big things yeah. are happening for them. Yeah. Um, there's one uh, one kid in particular, though, um, <laughs> who became a huge, huge uh, uh, fashion um, designer, mm. um, and his, uh, his name is uh, Jack McCullough. And the name the the company is Proenza Schuler, and they you know they would do um, uh, they do you know, incredibly beautiful. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Jack, if I'm screwing this up for you, but incredibly <laughs> beautiful uh, things for you know movie stars and right. You know, and but the point of my story is that if there was a kid at that time, this was in the mid '90s, that. He would have been the very last person on earth I would have thought would have gone on to become a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, what it taught me, as well as other, other instances, is that, that you just never know. Right. You just never know what's going to happen, which is true with kids. It's true with art, too. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just a lovely person. He's just the, uh, you know, most humble uh you know, he's a big star now. Sometimes I'll have him come back and talk to the kids. And, right. And they all know of him. Um, uh, um, but he's, you know. And somehow he found person. his way from art yes. into fashion, which, of course, correlate very nicely yeah. in a lot of ways. I mean, there are. I mean, if you yeah. look at, yeah. you know, a lot of the designers that are out there, the Tom Fords of the world have fantastic you know, art taste as well, and you know, can move in many yeah. forms, including film, and you know, and exactly. be super successful in that. Even though you know he's a, a fashion designer, so yeah. yeah, so that's an interesting. When you see that happen, that has to be uh, as rewarding to some ways, I would think, as it is as you know when you make art. Oh, it is. You know? It is because I don't. You know, uh, uh, I, I never think with the kids that I'm making you into an artist. Mm. You know, I, 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 they'll do what they want to do. You know, they'll, yeah. uh, in terms of, of, of what they're, they are prepared to go to art school if they want to do that. Mm -hmm. And they have the portfolio and all that. And that's good. And they can, and most, I'd say 99% of them, they all do it. But I don't think of that. I don't talk to them about their careers and this. It, it, 
What I want them to do is really to get a sense of themselves, a sense of, and I don't mean that in a kind of therapeutic way. Mm -hmm. I mean like that that if you're going to make art, you're you're going to do it. First of all, you're gonna you're gonna have to come up with your own reasons for doing it, your own justification for doing it. Mm. It makes you know our art creates its own meaning, and you're going to have to do it. That's what's going to sustain it. Um, and 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 I don't want you to all you know your work to look the same. I don't want it to be the same. Um, you want uh, there's many different paths to 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 uh, to solving this this thing. And so I want to give them that confidence, and mm-hmm. I want them to have that that excitement about it because there's people who did that for me, like Salvatore Scarpitta, who I right. mentioned before. So when you look at a portfolio or mm-hmm. a project that a kid's working on, if you see something that's unique and different, um, that's something to be encouraged versus something if you see them just doing, you know, yeah, copying of, a, of, yeah. of an artist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, again, getting back to—I mean, remember these are these are young people, yeah. and uh, you know, visual art is is much different than you know in the United States anyway. There's not there's not a prescribed way of learning it. You know, mm-hmm. with, if if a kid wants to be a musician, classical, you know, there is. He'll take Suzuki violin and mm-hmm. this and this and this. In in art, they're kind of all over the place. And so we'll see these kids come in, some who have these very polished portfolios and they've had a lot of training and and others who they just do weird stuff and it looks cool. Yeah. And it they bring in these sketches and it's stuff between a newspaper. Well, nobody has newspapers anymore, but you know the idea, right? <laughs> they're Kindles. And uh yeah, they yeah. and um and you get a you get a sense and uh so it's like that. Yeah. And so now you've been doing that for 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, where do you see yourself going for the next 20 years? We want, I, you notice I didn't say 30. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm still looking for... I, I, I still get a, a, a great deal of pleasure and excitement out of making art mm-hmm. and, um, and finding connections that, that feed that, like... Honestly, like coming down here, mm-hmm. like being a part of of this gallery and the environment around mm-hmm. here, which was something I could have never uh, anticipated. Which, you know, I really have you to thank is for the 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 original seed of that when you called me. Like, well, I've never been to Arizona. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> um, uh, so t- continuing with that yeah. and uh, uh, th- those kinds of inspirations. Yeah, yeah, I think those are important, and just let it flow. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And and there's a certain you know as you get older, I mean I don't want to sound ancient. I but I, I I've been doing this for a long time, and there there is a there is a bit more kind of liberation about it. You know hmm. what the hell I just yeah I don't care. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah. You know, I'm not supposed to mix this with mix that or draw this like that. Right. Oh, I don't care. I do it. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes those work better than you could imagine. I would think. Yeah. Yeah, and and again, that's part of the uh, I think the humbling experience of it. You know, you don't you create this art, but you don't always control it. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. You don't you create this art, but you don't always control it. Yeah, in the sense that it can just take its own form, regardless of what how much you want to try to. It can take so- its own form, and 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 it it cre- it can create its own emphasis that you didn't even wasn't maybe part of your original plan. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't mean that it's totally random. I, I don't mean that, but I mean that if you're if you're in touch with the painting that you're doing or the or the drawing or mm-hmm. the sculpture, whatever, if if a moment happens in it in this journey that that seems to dominate, and maybe that wasn't the moment that maybe that wasn't what your original thought would be. If you if if you're in tune with your art and you follow that, mm-hmm. you follow that in a way you follow the lead. That's what I mean about not controlling it. Maybe yeah. that's that following your hand. But um, um, so I I have tried to do that, and I think as you get older, it's a little easier. Yeah, Pueblo Potters tell me that kind of stuff that they let the clay decide what it's going to be. 
Well, I could never do that. Mine yeah. was just fell over. They uh, they, <laughs> they, they literally they, don't know what they're going to the, shape yeah. or anything, and it yeah. just forms into what it's going to be for them at that moment. And that's the same thing you're telling me right yeah, there. Yeah, they're like magic. Yeah, and things, weavers yes. sometimes feel that same way, I yeah. think, too. It's just, you know, it speaks to itself. Books are the same way, which I write. You know, I feel like you, you have an idea where things are going, but at the same time, uh, if you're open to your own internal dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, you can go down a road you had never anticipated. Yeah, that there's an exit ramp waiting there that you yeah. didn't think you were going to take. And you've got to, you've got to take it if you need to. That's right. You know? Yeah, don't be afraid to take that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think sometimes artists are afraid. Um, I see that one, in one way they do it is if they paint the same subject matter repeatedly uh, over and over uh, because it sells. Now, I understand that. And as a dealer, I should be encouraging it, I would think. But in the mm -hmm. same time, I think it's important to want to stretch and try different, um, yeah, just different subject matters, different, you know, you don't have to completely change things up. But at the same time, I think you get stale um, if it's the same subject matter over and over and over again. Yeah. And um, it's a hard thing to do as an artist because it, if it's selling. It is. If uh, Yeah. If you're, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. I, I've, I've never had that problem. Yeah, well, I you do think. all sorts of subjects. That's one of the things. You know, uh -huh. I don't know what you're going to give me from one time to the next, which I love. Um, and that brings me to the one other question I'd like to know about, because mm -hmm. you're an East Coast person, been yep. on the East Coast your whole life, yep. studied. Thing. How do you see the difference, which I see is very great, but maybe you don't, from the East Coast art community art world and the West from what you've experienced, at least through my gallery? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you're tempted to make sort of generalizations right. about East Coast, West Coast, but, and, and I, I, I think there are some of those things that are, that are true. There is an, Definitely an openness here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, maybe it's a reflection of the space itself. Mm -hmm. But, but for example, when I uh, came down last year for your uh, uh, 25th, mm -hmm. um, and that was actually the first time I had met you in person. I know, right? And, uh, after, <laughs> and that's after years. After years of, of working Dialogue, together. Yeah. yeah, and I, I, I and all the other folks I met, and I, I remember said to my wife, we talked about, why, why hadn't I come down here a long time ago? Because it just, there, there was an openness and a curiosity amongst people that you don't always find on the East Coast. And I think that's probably a reflection of, to some, to, to extrapolate a bit of the landscape. Mm -hmm. um, and on the East, uh, you know, people are, are Again, it's a generalization, but but a little bit more suspicious. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah, that's um, yeah, uh, more frantic, I think. There. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, I've been that way too. And you, know, you just, um, I, but I don't want to make too much about the laid back versus this. I don't, but but I I do think as a reflection of the air and the land, mm -hmm. I think it's true. Because if you're in the presence of something that's greater than yourself, mm -hmm. it has that effect, you know. And I think that this is what the landscape does. This is what it does for me, anyway. You're like that, there's a kind of of calming, almost uh, religious quality to it, and I'm, uh, that that finds its way into human interactions, mm -hmm. and that's what I find so wonderful and uh, uh uh you know you're gonna be a west coast boy i can feel it <laughs> <laughs> you're coming <laughs> maybe when you retire maybe. you're coming maybe. Maybe. you know it's it's true though i do I, I certain people i think when they uh find the west and they and i've known lots of people jamie who works for me is one of those people who grew up in pennsylvania and you know they just respond to the west and yeah. it's in a way that's guttural um, and religious almost, and it's hard to not want to be a part of that. Um, 
that dichotomy of between where you are now and then. So yeah. I predict we'll be seeing more more of you. You, you, here. you may, you may. I, I, it is as long really, as your wife likes it. That's the critical. Yeah, thing. that's right. That's <laughs> right. And yeah, family and all. But uh, it, it it is a magical place. Yeah. It really, really is. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to come out on this painting trip during the summer. Or during, you know, I, I wanted to see some of the monsoons, yeah. which I've, I've been... Yeah, you've been, you picked a good summer, uh, too. Yeah, just yeah. these these biblical, like, storms yeah. that appear, you know, yeah. and then they're gone. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I don't know. There's there's something that we need that way. Yeah, I yeah. think, and that, that is the West. We need it. And, yeah. you know, I tell artists that paint, you know, I see this... They'll send me imagery of you know they're approaching me to want to show my to show the work, and they'll show me images of saguaro cactus, and it's clearly they have never stood in the presence of a saguaro cactus. Yeah, yeah. and you cannot get the sensibilities of that uh, unless you do, um, which is one of the things reason I never said to you oh ever, right? I never said, oh, paint cactus or this, because I right. knew it would be a disaster if you hadn't been in front of them. Right. But right. once you're in front of them and yeah. experience them, magnificent. And you're, I mean, the cactus studies that you're doing and the cactus things you're doing, you know, they resonate with me. Well, thank you. Uh, and, you know, and I'm very picky about that kind of stuff, but it, I, you, you've captured it. You, you, your sense is there. You stood in front of the, the these major uh, you know, pieces of of nature and have gotten it and thank you so i think that um that art uh, you know this is something I, I i think about as i paint but also talk to students about that that believability is the 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 and authenticity is the thing that i respond to in painting um and so i'll tell kids you know it, yeah you want to look at something you want to analyze a form um, but in the end, the form, you know, what, what you're creating is going to stand on its own mm -hmm. and is going to be believable on its own, not as just as a reflection of that other thing. Um, and so that's why I think that the experience of being in front of the thing is what gives it its believability. Yes, that's right. Um, and I, obviously I'm not a, a detail painter. Yeah. I don't, you know, but I don't think that. For me, that's where the believability comes from. No, yeah. no, you don't need detail. Yeah, you need heart. Yeah, <laughs> it's and that organic it, form that yeah. just has to, you know, the lean of the saguaro yeah. tells me you've st stood in front of the saguaro. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and Jim would say you are believable and you are authentic. And I really appreciate having you today on the Art Dealer Diaries and, and in my gallery. You're a wonderful joy to, to be a part of our lives. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Mark. It's, a, it's a, a, for your kind words, and it's an honor to be a part of it. I'm really pleased thank to you. be here. Yeah, great. Now, I say we go do lunch. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> thank right, you. Thanks. The Art Dealer Diaries are brought to you by Medicine Man Gallery, located for over 26 years in Tucson, Arizona, specializing in antique Native American art, early Western art, including the famed Maynard Dixon, as well as modern art. You can find everything online at medicinemangallery.com. There's over 6,000 objects to select from. Also, the Charles Bloom Murder Mystery Series, written by yours truly, me, Mark Sublett. There's six books in this series, and they follow the protagonist Charles Bloom through all the intrigue of the art world set in Santa Fe and the Navajo Nation. These can be found on Audible, eBooks, Amazon, and of course, the gallery at medicinemangallery.com.